Hey everyone, this is Christine Vallis, and I'm blessed to join you guys as we enter into the new biblical month on God's calendar. It is the month of Savan. And Savan is the third month in God's spiritual calendar, and the number three is connected to the Hebrew letter Gimel, which is actually a picture of a camel. And isn't it funny, right behind me is Camelback Mountain here in beautiful Paradise Valley, Arizona. So I'm excited to usher in this new month of provision, extravagant provision. That's what camels represent in the Bible, God's true nature. So I'm excited to enter into this new month of the camel in the year of the camel, 5783. I have a whole chalkboard teaching on that, rising up and releasing God's extravagant provision. That's what the Lord is calling us to this year. So we're in the month of the camel, in the year of the camel, which is God's provision. And the most important thing I believe that the Lord wants us to know is that we begin and operate from a place of rest. If you notice that camel behind me is resting. So it's as if the Lord is pointing out to us to rest in his great provision and great love for us. So that's so exciting. I pray you enjoy the chalkboard teaching coming up and remember to rest in his great love for you. Welcome to the chalkboard teaching for the new biblical month that we are entering into. It is the month of Savan. And Savan is the third month in God's spiritual calendar. And as you may recall, we just went through the month of ER, which was a month of great revelation and of great transition in the Bible and even in real time in our lives. And now we flip over the calendar and we move out of transition and into the month where God poured out his extravagant provision. Yep, it's here in the month of Savan. And so provision, guys, by definition, is supply that has been made in advance for future use. And this is how the God of the Bible operates, not just in provision, but extravagant provision. And you know, we see this in Genesis, right in the beginning of the Bible, in creation, that God created everything that man would ever need first and then he created man, right? He provided lavishly for Adam before he created him. It wasn't like he created Adam and then said, oops, I forgot you need air, let me go make some, right? So, um, so it's extravagant provision, supply in advance. He did this for Adam and he does this for us. So here in Savan, we are reminded of God's true nature. He is the giver of all good things. He is the extravagant giver. He is over the top. He is not a taker. And even Romans 8, 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? So guys, this is our God. He is the extravagant giver all because of his great love for us. And in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Well, my name is Christine Vallis, and I'm excited to uncover the Lord's prophetic calendar with you guys in real time. So thanks for tuning in, and I pray this teaching is a blessing to you. All right, so this month of Savan highlights God's true nature as an extravagant giver, because it was here in this month um, when God gave extravagant gifts to his people, and not only in the month of Savan, but even on a specific day in this month. 
And Savan is the third month in God's spiritual calendar, and the number three is connected to the Hebrew letter Gimel, which has the value of three, and it's a picture of a camel. And I tried to depict that here in the chalkboard with the two humps of a camel's back here. And you know, in Bible days, if camels were coming your way, that meant provision was coming your way. So guys, supply is on its way, so let's be ready to receive. He has lavish gifts to give us actually two humps full of both physical and spiritual provision as we will see. And so he calls us to rest in his extravagant provision. So we will see um, these extravagant gifts in both the Old and the New Testament. So let's first look at how God provided physical provision first here in the Old Testament, here in this month of Savan. So check out Leviticus 23, 15. Um, God instructed Israel to count 50 days from the first uh, feast of first fruits that was from the barley harvest in Nisan all the way to the wheat harvest here in the month of Savan. They call it the counting of the Omer, or basically counting the days of the ripening of the wheat harvest. And so God established a feast at the end of that 50 day count and it's called Shavuot or the Feast of Weeks and that falls on Savan 6. Now Leviticus 23 continues and uh, God instructed them to offer two loaves of wheat bread to the Lord in thanksgiving for blessing their harvest. And then he also instructed them to gather the harvest for themselves, right? And then as you read in Leviticus, it says also the Lord instructed them to leave portions behind for the poor. We have been created in the image of God, and if God is a giver, then we are created to also be givers created in his image. And you know, we see this principle um, displayed in the book of Ruth. So you may wanna break out the book of Ruth. It's a good time to read. Um, and glean from the book of Ruth because its setting is actually taking place in the season from, from the uh, barley to the wheat harvest here in Savan. And so let's, guys, let's give and leave some gleaning, some handfuls of purpose for others because the Lord blesses our harvest, guys, to bless others. So be it our time, our resources, our money, even our very bread. And you know, as I was reading through and studying over that concept, um, I, I was reminded of 2 Corinthians 9, verses 10 and 11, and it just um, shows uh, the generous God that we serve and how he calls us to be generous like him and the blessing, the ripple effect of the blessing that this has. So check out 2 Corinthians 9, 10 and 11. Out of the Passion Translation, it says, this generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant toward you. First, he supplies every need plus more. Then he multiplies the seed as you sow, so that the harvest of your generosity will grow, and you will be abundantly enriched in every way as you give generously and on every occasion. For when we take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. This is our generous God calling us to be generous to others, and the ripple effect of thanksgiving and giving is just amazing. So now we've seen how God provided physical provision um, here in the month of Savan. Now let's look at the gifts of spiritual provision that he provided. And you know, because Jesus said, right, that man does not just live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. So now let's look back first in the Old Testament. And if we trace the steps of the Israelites in the book of Exodus, we'll see that in the month of Nisan, the Lord redeemed his people, right, out of Egypt, out of slavery, and they passed over and passed through the Red Sea. And then in the month of Er, they received great revelation and also transitioned in the desert. 
And now in Savan, in Exodus 18 and 19, we'll see that it's 50 days after the first Passover where God provided awesome spiritual provision. Again, on the sixth day of Savan, this is a day that celebrates the giving of his word, the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. Now, Mount Sinai was a very familiar place to Moses because 40 years earlier, we see in Exodus chapter 3 that Moses brought his father-in-law's uh, Jethro's sheep to this very spot. And God spoke to Moses there, right, from the burning bush where he called and commissioned him. And, you know, he even told him that he would be back at this mountain. Check it out. Exodus um, 3.12, God said to Moses, certainly I will be with you. And this shall be the, the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve and worship God at this mountain. So isn't that awesome? So we see that God fulfilled those words 15 chapters and 40 years later because Moses did go right back to Mount Sinai, but this time he brought his heavenly father's sheep, the children of Israel, back to the very same spot. And there God spoke to all of them out of the fire of the mountain. And it was there that God made a covenant with his people. And it's interesting to see in, in um, Exodus chapter 19 that they agreed to everything even before they heard a word of it. So pretty interesting, right? But God gave 10 commandments and then many other statutes. Check it out, Exodus 20 through 24. And you could also read this account in Deuteronomy chapter five. But this 50th day, guys, celebrates the extravagant spiritual provision of the the giving of his word, the giving of his Torah, the giving of revelation even at Mount Sinai. Now with this covenant in place, he gave again, right? Um, and what did he give? He gave the blueprints for the tabernacle. Now this tabernacle is um, a sanctuary, a holy place, a place that could be set apart why? So that God could come down and dwell in the midst of his people. Because guys, this is his heart's desire um, from the start to have a relationship with us and to restore what was lost in Eden. And so this tabernacling, um, every detail of it, check it out in Exodus 25 through 31, it was a foreshadow of how the coming Messiah Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, would make this possible. And guys, so this is still his desire. He wants to be in the midst of everything in our lives. Of course, he wants to be in the midst of our hearts. So if we've never received him, invite Jesus. I encourage you into your heart. And um, he wants to be in the middle of everything in our lives. And guess what? He would do anything to make that possible, even give up his very son. And that is what he did, all because of his great love for us. So now if we fast forward into the New Testament, we're going to see on the very same day, the sixth day of Savan, that God gave another gift of lavish spiritual provision. And that was, guys, the giving of the Holy Spirit. You can read about it in Acts chapter 1 and 2. So it was after Jesus' resurrection that everyone was counting the Omer from the Feast of First Fruits all the way to Shavuot. And it was the 40th day of this counting where right before Jesus ascended, where Jesus said to his disciples, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for what the Father has promised. Um, John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit in just a few days, and you will receive power to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and to the ends of the earth. So now if we read on in Acts 2, what happened was that 120 of those disciples gathered in Jerusalem after Jesus ascended, and they were getting ready to celebrate the Feast of Weeks, to celebrate Shavuot, the giving of the Torah, and they were up all night reading the Torah, and actually that is a tradition um, that is done even to this day. 
And so there they were in the upper room. Uh, it was early morning on the 50th day on Shavuot, and it was a very similar scene to Mount Sinai as we read um, with the cloud and the fire because there in the upper room, there was a great noise and a mighty wind filled the house and tongues of fire guys rested upon the disciples and they began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. And this day is known as Pentecost. It is the giving of the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus had promised and 3000 people were saved. So God gave both of these extravagant gifts of spiritual provision, the giving of his word at Mount Sinai, and then the giving of his Holy Spirit in the New Testament, all on the very same day. This 50th day of the Omer count, um, known as Shavuot and Pentecost, the sixth day of Savan. So I encourage you to celebrate it. And you know, as we read through the word, guys, we'll see that God is the one who initiates covenants with his people. They are of his idea, all because of his great love for us. So, you know, when we read the old covenant, you know, God gave us his word, right? The Torah, the book of the law, and all of God's words are good. Proverbs 8, 8 says this, it says, all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing froward or perverse in them. So the law is good, but the problem is we could never keep the law. What the law did, guys, it revealed our need for a savior. But God provided extravagantly in advance again. He gave us Messiah before the foundations of the world. Isn't that awesome? First Peter 1.20 tells us that. So guys, he has thought of everything and he has thought of everyone. So God gave yet again when he gave us the new covenant. And as Hebrews declared, it's the new and better covenant in Jesus because the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So the question often arises, what do we do with the law of the Old Testament? But what did Jesus say? He said, don't think that I came to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. So he fulfilled it all for us because guys, we never could. So when we believe upon Jesus, we no longer live under this law, but we live under God's grace. And we live a godly life, not because we have to, or not because we're trying to earn our salvation or our good standing with God, but it comes out automatically out of the love relationship with him. Just like it says in Galatians 5, 6, faith works by love. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says of Jesus that God made him who knew no sin to become sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. We become righteous because of the divine exchange. And so on top of all that, guys, all the promises now are yes and amen to all of those in Christ. So let's open up our Bibles, even Deuteronomy 28, and receive those lavish blessings because they are ours and Jesus and make them our very own. So these extravagant gifts, guys, are ours, and all we have to do is receive them. They're just waiting to be opened up, right? So let's open up the Word of God and receive fresh revelation from the gift of His Word, and even take those secrets, you know, that He perhaps shared with you in the month of ER, and let's ask God for fresh wisdom on how to implement those things, how to walk them out by the Spirit, even here in this month that's connected with walking, as um, we'll get into soon. And now also too, guys, let's receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I want to give a, a foundation here on this because I was someone who never really um, knew about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I heard about it, but I mean, I can never find it in scripture. And so I hope this helps. So, so in the Old Testament, guys, the Holy Spirit would come and go on believers to fulfill a task like he did on David, right? But the Holy Spirit could not dwell in a believer because sin was not atoned for yet. 
But now in the new covenant, we become born again and we become new creations in Christ, right? And the Holy Spirit resides in us. He, we are sealed with him forever as a pledge, as it talks about in 2 Corinthians. But here now, if we look in the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7, I encourage you to look at it because here we see the second step. Because Paul asked believers, right? He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? So clearly there is a second step going on. And they said, no, we haven't even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. But once they heard from Paul about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he then laid hands on them as they wanted it eagerly, and they began to speak in tongues and prophesy. So guys, that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's the empowerment that enables us to fulfill our calling, just as Jesus said in John 14, 12, he said that we would do works and greater works than he did. And how would we do that? We would have to do it with some supernatural gift. And it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And don't we see this in the disciples? Because they were radically changed after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because early in the Gospels, we read uh, about them and they were often fearful and timid. And um, But then, here in the book of Acts, they became bold apostles walking with authority. That is the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so guys, he is offering that very same gift to us in real time as believers. So let's not go any further in our own strength, right? Let's come out of this season differently. Let's come out empowered. I mean, what makes us different from the world, right? So the Lord says, all you have to do is ask the Father, right? Luke 11 says, if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask. So as believers, guys, all we have to do is ask and then receive the extravagant gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, as we do, we can open up our mouths and receive the heavenly prayer language and pray to God's spirit to spirit. And in addition to that, guys, we become a well springing up giving life to others. And we begin then to minister with the gifts of the Holy Spirit in love, um, talking about these gifts mentioned in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 12, like the words, a word of wisdom, the gift of faith, healing, miracles, prophecy. So guys, it is time to come up and out of the wilderness season and the power of the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus did, and be his witnesses to do good works, those works that he has planned in advance for us to do. All right, guys, well, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the gospel is on circuit over our heads and every constellation points to the gospel. So in this month of Savan, it is connected with a constellation Gemini, which is a picture of the twins. So we can look at this in many different ways and I think they're all valid. So the twins could be the twin tablets of the 10 commandments that were given in this month. It could also be the twin loaves of wheat that were offered at Shavuot. It could also be the Jew and Gentile coming together as one new man Messiah. Also the Old and New Testaments that make up our Bible. And we can also look at the twins that were actually born in this month of Savan, the twins of Jacob and Esau. And you know, although they were twins, they were very different, right? And they had two complete different destinies. And that was because they were exercising the gift of free will that God gave them. And you know, guys, so we have a choice and the Lord is encouraging us to choose life, to walk the path of Jesus. And so that reminds me and leads to our next point here on the chalkboard that the action connected here in this month of Savan is continuous walking. So, you know, you've probably heard from science class back in high school um, that an object at rest stays at rest, but an object in motion stays in motion, right? And so what does Jesus say to his disciples? He calls them and he calls us to follow him, 
right? And that's an ongoing process. That's continuous walking. So we are called in the word. You can see he calls us to continue on in his word with that progressive revelation. And all over the New Testament, we are instructed to walk. Ephesians says, you know, you used to walk according to the world, but now as a new creation, God calls us to walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He calls us to walk in love. And in Romans, it says walk in newness of life. But how do we do this? Well, guys, it's the same gift that gives us the boldness to prophesy the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, that enables us to walk by the Spirit. And so he empowers us from the inside out, and as a result, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh, as it talks about in Galatians 5. So his Spirit, guys, keeps us moving along in an upward, godly motion. He fills our sails with that spiritual momentum and causes us to break through and in him we have the power to overcome and again it's not by our own strength right it's not by might it's not by power but it's by his spirit from the inside out now guys also walking portrays rest and confidence doesn't it when you're walking you're not in a hurry usually you you are walking with consistency and with a purpose and that is what it is to walk in the spirit not running around in haste or fear and we are able to do that guys because we do not walk alone right jesus walks in us he is with us he walks with us and he talks with us and he tells us that we are his own and so as we abide in him and in his word our walk will match our talk automatically you know because we're just abiding it in him and it, and it just happens from the inside out automatically so let's even consider guys taking a walk in the natural with the lord because he desires fellowship with us and that companionship so let's consider getting out there and walking with the lord even now in the cool of the day so now the tribe that's connected to this month is the tribe of Zebulun, right here depicted here in this sailboat. And it's interesting to know that Jesus began his ministry in the land of Zebulun. And you can read about that in Matthew 4. And it's then also when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Again, he calls us to do the same, right? And so Jesus called his disciples there in Matthew 4. And what did he say? He said, follow me, right? Continuous walking. And he called these two brothers, James and John. They were the sons of Zebedee, and they were from the tribe of Zebulun. And they were fishermen, and they left everything to follow Jesus. Now, these guys were not just casually fishing in some pond. Fishing was their business. So when they left everything, they left everything. And, you know, this tribe of Zebulun was given the ability to profit through sea trade. And it was prophesied over Zebulun um, through Moses and Jacob. You know, Moses blessed the tribe of Zebulun, saying that they would provide financially for Israel through the sea. And even Jacob blessed them and told them that they would dwell by the sea. And, you know, as we read through the Old Testament, though, we discover that that prosperity that was prophesied over Zebulun did not happen overnight because when the tribe of Zebulun entered into their territory they actually found themselves to be landlocked not dwelling by the sea but the tribe of Zebulun was known for their loyalty and for their giving and so they dwelled in the land and they cultivated faithfulness and the Lord increased their boundaries and they sailed into their destiny so guys, increase takes time, right? There's seed, time, and then harvest. So this principle is even found in the account that happened here in this month at Mount Sinai. Check it out in Exodus 23, 30, where the Lord promised to the Israelites that he would drive out their enemies, but he would do so little by little over time and then their boundaries would be increased and they would possess their full inheritance so guys let's not move in haste let's follow his lead and not quick schemes and let's be encouraged by isaiah 48 17 that says i am the lord your god 
who teaches you how to profit, who leads you in the way that you should go. So guys, let's go forth following him, walking after him, and listening to him in this business person's month because the Lord delights in the prosperity of his people. So you may not consider yourself a business person. Um, here in this month of Savan, it's known as the business person's month connected to Zebulun. But you know, in Deuteronomy 8.18, it says that he has given us power and grace to create wealth. So let's ask the Lord, you know, this is our covenant. Let's ask him to confirm and bless the work of our hands and even to give us creativity and wisdom for witty inventions that we can bless others. And you know, guys, he may even call us to leave our nets behind and become fishers of men, but we can trust him because where God guides, he provides and his provision will be for us in a place called there. And so here's the thing though, we have not been given just grace and power just to create wealth and accumulate it for ourselves. Because if we read the rest of Deuteronomy 8.18, it goes on to say that we've been given this power and grace to create wealth so that he can establish his covenant that he swore to our fathers. So what covenant is that? Well, it's the covenant that he gave to Abraham in Genesis 12, 1 and 2, that we are blessed to be a blessing, that we are to have enough and extra, that we are to have bread and seed. Guys, our financial gain does not stop at our own house. He will get it to us if he can get it through us. We are blessed to be a blessing. We are not to be a dead sea with that has one opening that's always taking, always taking. We are called to be like the Sea of Galilee, full of life and provision that is receiving and giving to others. And guys, we are made in his image to be givers. And Zebulun, they were known to encourage the other tribes to give to the Lord. And guys, it's in this very month when God asked Moses to receive a free will offering for the tabernacle from his people. You can read about it in Exodus 25. And so they gave silver and gold from their hearts, not under guilt or obligation, and they had enough and extra. So it's true, God loves a cheerful giver. So let joy be your barometer in giving, whether it's your time, money, or even revelation. So as mentioned earlier, Moses prophesied over all the tribes, and we see in Deuteronomy 33 of Issachar, he said that they would rejoice in staying in, but of the tribe of Zebulun, they would rejoice in going out. So if we look back last month, in the month of ER, you know, we were getting into God's word, we were diving into his word, staying in his word, gaining, gaining revelation, gaining insight. But now we're looking ahead, even here, moving through the month of Saban, and he's calling us to rejoice in going out, to start walking out those strategies that he has given us. And even physically, like we said in Deuteronomy, again, it says that we are blessed when we come in and we are blessed when we go out. And why is it? It's because he goes with us. So whether we're coming or going, guys, we are blessed because we are in him. And that promise was in the Old Testament. And so how much more, guys, we're under the new and better covenant. So his Holy Spirit resides in us 24-7. So we are blessed. And this truth is underscored in the last encouragement I want to share through the tribe of Zebulun. And that is the meaning of the name Zebulun means dwelling desired. So guys, we are his dwelling desired. We are his temple. We are his sanctuary. We are his resting place. And that's why we can be secure in any season because he rests in us so we can rest in him. And I'm reminded of the verse, greater is he who is in us than he who is in 
the world. So lastly, guys, I'm going to just finish the teaching with a Hebrew letter that's connected with this month. It is the Hebrew letter Zion. It's right here in the midst of this sailboat here. And Zion, guys, is a picture of a sword. It's also a picture of nourishment, like the word of God. It has a value of seven, which means rest and completion. So I believe the Lord is encouraging us that Jesus is the word of God, that we have the sword of the spirit. It has been given to us to nourish us, to empower us, and to give us rest. That is awesome. So thank you, Lord, for your great love for us, that you did not even spare your only son for us, but you continued even on to give us these extravagant gifts, Lord, of your word and of your spirit. Lord, so let us not just leave them unopened, God. Let us um, see, open our eyes, open our hearts to see the value of these gifts that you have given us, the gift of your word and the gift of your spirit, Lord, so we can fulfill our destiny in you. And so I want to close out this teaching with what the Lord said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And I believe he's saying this to us. And he said this to Abraham. He said, leave your country, your kindred, and your father's household and go to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those who curse you and all of the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So guys, we are blessed to be a blessing all because of his extravagant love for us. Thanks for watching and happy Savan in Jesus.